So, time for another short Patreon briefing. First of the poll results for all of rank lieutenant and higher. And second, the fast answers to short questions. So, first off, the poll results. We have two clear winners here. Tactics with 44% and Logistics with 32% with a total of 25 votes. So, the Tactics video is already in progress. And if you're Patreon, you also know what it is about. And logistics will be coming up probably at the end of the month. So next off are the questions. First off from Aurel X Schwarzer. What religion were raised in? You said no politics, but you didn't mention religion. Yeah, <laughs> sneaky one. I was raised Catholic, more or less. It depends. In Austria, basically everyone is Catholic, but only a few people practice being Catholic. So what religion were raised in? Semi-Catholic? It's hard to give a clear answer here. It really depends on the culture because I think in other countries Catholics are more more practicing, I think. Or we'll take it a little bit more serious. So So what is the highest military rank Adolf Hitler attained? Well according to Ian Kershaw's Hitler biography, which is basically the one everyone recommends. He notes him as a corporal. The problem here is in German, as far as I know, that is Gefreiter. But there's also a corpora corporal in German. So if you read around, you can actually get quite confused because at a certain point I also wasn't sure anymore. So I looked it up and I checked with the German Wikipedia because I also remember that the generals or something He's always referred to as Gefreite. So, next question. At this moment, whom do you consider to be the greatest strategist or tactician of the Wehrmacht? Well, I'm totally unqualified to report on that because I didn't look at any specific battles yet in detail, nor at any specific person in detail, nor about any discussions about, about the various generals in ranks and in, in about their skills and everything. So, and I think it's also pretty hard to answer. I mean, clearly Manstein was highly regarded, Guderian was highly regarded, but Rommel was also highly regarded and a lot of people say, yeah, Rommel actually, no, he was overhyped. Pretty tough one, even with a lot of knowledge, I would say. So next one from Spartan. Hey MHV, did the Germans actually deploy an effective flamethrower tank design? Yes, they did. They had quite a few. One of the most built was the Flampanzer 2. It was a version of the Panzerkampfwagen 2 Ausführung D and E. And it was around in 1940 that they were produced. And there was an order about, about 90 pieces and the last were delivered in January 1942. On 1st of April 1942 they had 95 of them in special tank formations. So there was also a, a zero series. This is why they are more than they actually ordered. So it had around 11 tons of, of weight and he had two small turrets for delivering flame oil which could be turned to 180 degree and it could give about 80 flame waves of 2 to 3 seconds. And the range was about 35 meters and it also had an MG-34 to defend itself. But there were more. There was also a variant of the Panzerkampfwagen 3, which was based on the Ausführung M version, the M variant. And they built around 100, it seems. And it was also in 1942. They also could give about 70 to 80 flames, flame waves. But he had a range from 55 to 60 meters. And the official designation was Panzerkampfwagen 3 in Klammer FL for flame, I assume, or flam. Sonderkraftfahrzeug 141-3, 141-3. And also they were in special tank units. They were used in special tank units. And then there were certain reconstructions of the Char-1 bis, 
capture tanks. They used flamethrowers in them. I don't know how many. And of course there was a, not necessarily a tank, but also with flamethrowers equipped um, Sonderkraft for track 251s, the half tracks. And there were also, I think, versions of the Panzer 38 T and also a Sturmgeschütz variant. So, but I, as far as I know, the the main versions were the Panzer II and Panzer III. So next part, everyone knows about the Allied Crocodile and Zippo, but did the Germans come up with, yeah, and to any effect? So I sadly don't have any operational history so far. Maybe I need to look deeper, but so far there's nothing written how effective they were or were not. Now I assume they worked to a certain degree because they built a second batch with the with the Panzer III. The other point is, since the Wehrmacht became more defensive, flamethrower tanks and flamethrower units are usually used in an assault role mainly against bunkers, fortifications, and also against tanks. But at a certain point, there were better anti-tank weapons than flamethrowers. So I assume we don't know very much about them because they were not as crucial later on when they were actually available. But let me know if this answer was sufficient, else I can dig a bit deeper. And all the other questions, there will be an extra or extra videos on them. So this involves the El Alamein questions and what got me into military history and specifically what got me into World War II military history. And also the parity, the production parity question and the recycling question. They are already filmed and ready. So I hope this answered all your questions. Thank you for watching and see you next time.